Ben ritrovati amici telespettatori. Sono stato sedotto da Dio attraverso questo film. È la frase più significativa pronunciata dall'attore americano Shia Leboeuf durante un'intervista da lui concessa a Fra Francesco Di Leo, all'epoca rettore del santuario di San Giovanni Rotondo, oggi ministro provinciale dei frati minori cappuccini della provincia religiosa di Sant'Angelo e Padre Pio. Shaya ha concesso questa intervista a Fra Francesco al termine delle riprese del film di cui lui ha interpretato da protagonista il ruolo di Padre Pio. Il film che ha avuto come regista il maestro, anche lui americano, Abel Ferrara. Le riprese si sono svolte nel 2021 in Puglia tra Monte Sant'Angelo per quanto riguarda gli esterni e il convento dei frati Cappuccini di San Marco la Catola per quanto riguarda gli interni. E, eh, il periodo di chiusura delle riprese risale al 2022 e questo è anche il motivo per cui vedrete durante l'intervista che eh, in studio vengono usate le mascherine. È eh, un film, quello che ehm, purtroppo ancora non è uscito in Italia, in cui si ricostruisce uno spaccato eh, della vita di Padre Pio, eh, per la precisione il momento in cui lui ricevette la stigmatizzazione eh, permanente. Il um, ruolo appunto di Padre Pio è stato interpretato eh, da questo attore conosciuto, conosciutissimo, ma per tutt'altro tipo di ruoli da lui interpretati in altri film precedenti, ma questo film è stato per lui particolare, un film che lo ha portato alla conversione, è proprio la storia di questa conversione, quella che lui eh, racconta rispondendo alle domande di Fra Francesco Di Leo, una storia che all'epoca eh, non aveva raggiunto il suo punto finale, che nel frattempo è stato comunicato dai mezzi di informazione. Eh, di padre cattolico e di madre ebrea, Shia Leboeuf, 38 anni, già battezzato, dopo aver annunciato di essersi convertito al cattolicesimo nel 2022, e uno degli annunci è, pro è proprio quello che ehm, ascolteremo in questa intervista, il 31 dicembre del 2023 è stato pienamente accolto nella Chiesa Cattolica ricevendo il sacramento della confermazione, cioè la cresima, da Monsignor Robert Bacchini. Aaron, vescovo della diocesi di Wainona Rochester in Minnesota e che ora, e ora eh, diciamo dopo eh, la cresima, Shia Leboeuf starebbe pensando a diventare diacono. La notizia è stata annunciata dai frati cappuccini degli Stati Uniti dopo appunto la cresima che è stata celebrata nella parrocchia di Old Mission Santa Ines in California esattamente nella chiesa dove eh, Leboeuf si è recato per prepararsi ad interpretare il ruolo di Padre Pio con la guida del cappuccino Alexandre Rodriguez, che vedremo presente in studio e che risponderà ad alcune domande di Fra Francesco Di Leo. Quindi eh, la storia di eh, conversione di Shia Leboeuf è cominciata proprio negli Stati Uniti, in questo convento californiano con eh, la guida eh, di Fra Alexander. Una storia che poi è continuata eh, con eh, l'interpretazione del ruolo di Padre Pio, che si è consolidata quando anche a San Giovanni Rotondo per un certo periodo ha frequentato il convento dei frati Cappuccini, ha respirato la stessa aria di santità che eh, ha respirato eh, Padre Pio durante la sua permanenza nella città garganica e poi è maturata a distanza di tempo con eh, la cresima e con la decisione di voler diventare diacono. Quindi possiamo dire che questo film è stato davvero quello che ha scardinato più di tutti il desiderio di Shia Leboeuf di diventare cattolico, di convertirsi, di cambiare vita. Certamente anche prima, come ascolteremo, c'era stato qualche sorta di invito che lui aveva ricevuto 
il meccanismo eh, della conversione non è stato diciamo, un fulmine a ciel sereno, è stato un percorso graduale che ha avuto eh, anche qualche eh, iniziale elemento in precedenza, ma certamente la conoscenza della figura di Padre Pio, il frequentare i frati Cappuccini sono stati determinanti. Quindi davvero attraverso questo film, come ha detto Sciaia, è stato sedotto da Dio. Ma noi prima ancora di eh, vederlo, certamente nei panni che ha vestito nel film, perché così è stata realizzata l'intervista, quindi con Sciaia nei panni di Padre Pio con l'abito cappuccino, vogliamo vederlo in alcune scene tratte dal film. Vediamo il trailer. I know you shed tears. I know you continue to shed tears every day because of man's ingratitude. You choose souls. And despite my unworthiness, you've chosen me. The primary source of all human oppression and exploitation is individual property. What is he talking about? He's talking about how we can get control of our lives. I know you'll give me what I need. I know you will not refuse me. I need courage. I know you will provide. War is a terrible thing. Do not let Satan take advantage of your suffering. Quindi avete visto l'atmosfera che con grande maestria il regista Abel Ferrara ha ehm, messo in scena e eh, ha dato per riprodurre eh, questo momento significativo della vita di Padre Pio, il periodo della sua stigmatizzazione permanente. Ecco perché serviva un uh, attore che interpretasse il Padre Pio giovane, il Padre Pio trentenne. Uh, il regista ha voluto dare a uh, questo momento della vita di Padre Pio un significato particolare. Non a caso ha uh, messo in atto attraverso le riprese una sorta di parallelismo tra la stigmatizzazione permanente di Padre Pio e un episodio storico avvenuto a San Giovanni Rotondo due anni dopo, cioè un eccidio che si è verificato per ragioni politiche quando nell'ottobre del 1920 alle elezioni comunali vinsero i socialisti che volevano innalzare eh, sul balcone del comune al posto della bandiera tricolore la bandiera rossa del loro partito. Questa decisione fu oggetto di controversie, si crearono due fronti contrapposti sulla piazza antistante il palazzo comunale e per prevenire un'azione di eh, dimostrazione di violenza con possibili feriti erano presenti i carabinieri ma la situazione comunque degenerò e ci fu uno scontro a fuoco nel quale ci furono eh, 11 vittime. Quindi eh, la notizia ebbe un clamore nazionale perché 11 vittime, 11 eh, morti per uno scontro politico non passò inosservata alla cronaca eh, dei quotidiani nazionali e persino 
alle attività del Ministero dell'Interno e del Parlamento italiano. Ebbene, eh, Abel Ferrara ha voluto legare questi due avvenimenti, ripeto, storicamente distanti due anni, perché ha voluto rileggere nella stigmatizzazione eh, di Padre Pio una sorta di risposta dell'uomo di Dio al male del mondo, al dolore che il male, la violenza, causano nel mondo. Ecco perché è un film significativo e noi ci auguriamo che Dopo l'edizione statunitense che ha avuto i suoi percorsi in lingua inglese si possa ottenere che anche la versione in lingua italiana che purtroppo è stata vista soltanto a San Giovanni Rotondo in due o tre giornate di proiezione all'interno dell'aula Maria Paile nel complesso della chiesa di San Pio da Pietrelcina, il complesso realizzato dall'architetto Renzo Piano su suo disegno. Eh, oltre questa, queste due tre proiezioni che ci sono state all'interno di questo complesso ci possa essere una distribuzione o attraverso eh, il canale ordinario delle sale eh, cinematografiche o attraverso qualcuna delle piattaforme che possano permettere la visione di questo film a un ampio pubblico. E ora dopo aver illustrato tutto quello che è il contorno di questa vicenda umana e spirituale di Shia Leboeuf, ascoltiamo le sue parole, ascoltiamo questa intervista realizzata da uh, Fra Francesco Di Leo con l'ausilio di uh, Giulio Cifaldi che ha fatto da interprete perché uh, l'intervista è in lingua inglese e uh, la vedremo con la voce originale di Shia, quindi sottotitolata. Carissimi amici, pace e bene. Quella che stiamo per raccontare è una storia davvero straordinaria la storia di una stella di Hollywood che nel suo tortuoso cammino di vita ad un certo punto, quando tutto sembrava giungere ad un epilogo devastante di scelta estrema, trova una mano tesa, pronta a risollevare il suo stato di completo abbandono. Nella ripresa di una vita con dei valori nuovi e soprattutto di una vita che comincia ad essere illuminata dalla fede eh, cristiana, cattolica, accade qualcosa di sorprendente. La richiesta da parte del noto regista Abel Ferrara di interpretare il ruolo di Padre Pio nella sua ultima pellicola. La persona che sto per incontrare non è un vero frate, ma un artista, attore, sceneggiatore e regista statunitense di grande successo e popolarità. Shia LaBeouf, che ha appena terminato le riprese del film su Padre Pio e che oggi ha deciso di parlare con noi della sua vita, della sua carriera e della sua conversione. Benvenuto Shia e grazie per aver accolto il nostro invito. Welcome Shia, thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you, thank you for having us. Allora, Shaya, tu sei nato a Los Angeles 35 anni fa. E che ricordi hai dei primi anni della tua vita e soprattutto come ecco, eh, leggeresti, definiresti eh, la tua famiglia oggi? So, Shaya, you were born 35 years ago. Uh, what can you tell us uh, of, your, uh, of your youth? What kind of a child were you and how would you describe your family? I grew up, um, we were happy, um, uh, lower, lower income, lived in downtown LA, and I wanted to be rich. And the exports in Los Angeles were uh, be a drug dealer or a gangster or a criminal or be an actor. I had no money to go to college. Ok, ma la tua famiglia è una famiglia religiosa, quali erano i valori più importanti? But your family, was your family a religious family? Which were the most important values in your family? My, my mother was, um, uh, uh, come from Hasidic Jews, but was like performative religious. Show up to shul on the big holidays. My dad went to uh, prison when I was young and came out a uh, Methodist Christian. He was a chaplain in prison. And so when he came out, I got baptized, Methodist. 
metodista. metodista. E, quali cose ti interessavano di più della vita? E, qual era il tuo sogno? E quali erano le cose che ti interessavano più nella vita e quale era il tuo dream? Yeah, my family broke up because of money. So I wanted money. So I wanted my family. And uh, being an actor seemed like an easy way to make money. So I could have my family. Quindi la tua carriera nel cinema inizia molto presto. A quanti anni hai cominciato? So your career in cinema started uh, quite early. How old were you when you first started? Uh, I got my first job when I was uh, 10 years old. Yes. 10. My dad sold cocaine to stand-up comedians at this place, a stand-up club called the Ice House. And I would go and, they, and I met a man named Jay Leno, big stand-up comedian. Jay. He had a show, a big show in the States called The Tonight Show. And he brought me on to the show and then I did skits and I got an agent. My dad was in a biker gang called the Mongols. And the reason that's important is because he, we would go to the stand-up club with all his friends and they would laugh at my jokes. And they were big men. And, you know, you put 10 big men laughing and it makes everyone else laugh because they have to. So, they, so the pressure of that is what Jay Leno saw. He saw me uh, at 10 years old doing stand-up for a room of my dad's friends and everybody else who was there laughed because these men were laughing. E si è arrivato ben presto poi a, gira a girare dei film importanti, ha interpretato Louis Stevens nella serie di Disney Channel, ruolo che ti ha permesso di, eh, insomma, di ricevere anche dei premi importanti, poi vogliamo ricordare anche Indiana Jones, la trilogia di Transformers, Disturbia, Wall Street. So you, st you still started having uh, important roles, uh, for instance, Uh, you interpreted Lewis Stevens in the TV series Disney Channel, a role that enabled you to win uh, some awards. Uh, then uh, Indiana Jones, the trilogy of Transformers, Disturbia and Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Sono solo dei film tra i più importanti. These, che... are, these are just a few among the important films you took part in. Yeah, these are the big money movies. These are the international movies that may have come here, but these movies don't mean anything. They have no intrinsic value, they have no spirit, they don't mean anything. Entertainment. Shaya, poi, ad un certo punto, che cosa succede nella tua vita? Cominci a vivere delle esperienze che ti gettano nel buio. Ti va di parlarne? Shaya, so at one point, uh, what happens in your life? You start uh, living some experiences that uh, shed darkness in your life. Um, would you like to, to talk? Yeah, so the, all these movies, I have big shame about these movies. They don't mean anything. And I felt like I was living a life that was meaningless. Uh, and so um, uh, I drank a lot and smoked a lot of weed. Very lascivious with women. And was uh, trying to like fill um, a hole, just constantly chasing instincts, just like an animal. And thought I was in control of things. And I was in an industry that would applaud that. And so I would come to set and I would freak out in front of a camera, ooh, and people would clap. And then I'd go home and I'd be a crazy person. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I uh, um, hurt people, was a big sinner in my life. And grew up believing that that was the way. I came up looking at guys like uh, Marlon Brando, Sean Penn. Um, I didn't look up to like Tom Hanks and Tom Cruise. I, the guys that interested me were the dark ones. I thought the dark ones were interesting. And I thought in order for me to be happy, I needed to make substantial work. And everything, all these pictures you just showed are like Steven Spielberg uh, movies or like Transformers movies. And it felt like none of them were, meant anything. They weren't about anything. And the guys that were making movies that I thought were meaningful were broken hearted. This is boring. Quindi ad un certo punto uh, niente più ti dava soddisfazione nella vita. Uh, nothing gave you satisfaction in life. Right, at that nothing. Point. Yeah, no. So then, then I thought my life was pointless and then I um, um, kept um, making money, getting famous, smoking weed, drinking, um, hurting people, lying to people, deceiving people, and then. Um, um, About uh, 11 months ago, 
Um, uh, a woman put out an article in the New York Times saying I hurt her very bad. And then um, all of the things that I used to use to fill my, um, that emptiness up stopped working. And then I didn't want to be alive anymore. So I, um, in the States we have something called Zoom. I don't know if you have it. And I had a producer, I had um, gotten arrested in Georgia for fighting with a policeman. The pr producer got, was arrested? No, I was arrested making a movie in Georgia okay, for fighting so with a policeman. And on that movie was a producer who was in a spiritual program that helps people who have a problem with alcohol. And he told me to go on this meeting. So I go on this meeting and I see 50 men smiling and laughing. And that's my first sign of God is laughter. And so I listen because I don't have any laughter in my life. And I see they're laughing with each other and they have friendships and they're com they have camaraderie and they have this fraternity. And I feel like, ooh, this is like a family. I have been making these movies all this time to build a family making money to get a family, but my family was disaster, and I'm seeing a family, and I'm, and I'm for the, I had tried to do this before, but this time, I had none of the tools that used to bring me joy or fill that hole up worked anymore. I would smoke weed and not get high, I would just be worse off than I was before, or I would drink and I wouldn't get drunk, or I would have sex with random women and I wouldn't feel any joy, there was no, none of the things I was doing to fill that human instinct were, were um, being fulfilled. And uh, the, uh, one of these men in the meeting, who, he says, we all share, everybody shares in the meeting. And one of the men in the meeting says, you don't have everything you want, but you have everything you need right now. And he says, he says, if you're, if you're playing, if, if, if you have God in your life, you're playing with loaded dice. God cheats in your favor. Quindi puoi pensare che quella sia stata la mano di Dio che ti ha rialzato da quella situazione così difficile per te. So do you think it was the hand of God who helped you in that difficult moment yes, of your God, life? God, God um, destroyed my fake life. And at the time I was heartbroken. I thought, nah, this is, like, I don't want to be here anymore. I, had a, I was ready to leave this Quindi world. Di, di, di and at first I fought it a lot. I thought, well, hey, I didn't do all these things this woman said about me. And I wanted to fight it. And I wanted to go on social media and say all this stuff. And I, I wanted to talk to the world and say, oh, this didn't happen. Here's the proof. And I wanted to argue. Um, I realize now that this is partly why me and Pio's paths cross. Um, And I don't want to speak too much on that out of respect, but um, yes, God, God's hand was involved in that woman going public with the damage that I caused her, yes. But to go back to the last question just for a second, because it, it leads to me meeting him and, and this whole thing happening. So if, uh, uh, um, I'm going to this meeting a couple days, couple days, and finally my, my, my spiritual guidance, my friend, my my partner online says come meet me at the beach and I have let me just I have no God in my life because my idea of God is just fear and this man is talking from a fearless place so I believe him and he says he says um, he points at the ocean at the waves and he says I know you don't believe in God that's okay so why don't you just try to stop the waves and I said what do you think I'm stupid like okay yeah I know I can't stop the waves I'm not an idiot yeah. okay he says um He says, I know, oh wait, he says, um, he says, I know you can't, I, I, know, I know you don't believe in God, that's okay, but your life is terrible, your life sucks, the way you've been le leading it is, is a disaster, your life is a disaster. And I know he's right, and so I'm willing, because I'm in pain. And I say, stop waves, and the waves don't stop. And he says, no, put your back into it, really try. And I say, stop waves, and they don't stop. And he says, I just want you to pray to the waves, until God shows up, and so I do. And then a month later, I'm, 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 I, maybe, a month, maybe a little bit longer than that, maybe a month and a half later, I'm on my meeting, and Abel Ferreira asks me if I know about Padre Pio. Quindi possiamo dire che da quel momento 
è iniziata la ricerca di un nuovo volto di Dio e, e la fede ha cominciato ad illuminare anche la tua vita. So from that moment there was a new research of God and no. faith started. No, 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 because I'm still a narcissist. Just looking at Padre Pio like, oh, this is another opportunity to make a movie. Sì, no, a parte il film, uh, io dicevo l'incontro con questa persona che è riuscito a tirarlo fuori da quella situazione eh, ha permesso che lui cominciasse la ricerca di un nuovo volto di Dio, no? Ok, so a meeting, non sto parlando del film adesso. Meeting this person uh, helped you to start changing yeah. your life. Opened me, meaning. opened my mind. And, and made me pray to something I didn't know yet. E It gave me diceva. hope. It yeah. gave me hope. But faith came later. Uh, it gave me belief, hope and belief, oh, but not yeah. faith yet, because yeah, I, I didn't read the gospel. I read one Padre Pio book, two bad made-for-television movies, okay? I'm sorry, f uh, two movies, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and that's all I knew about Padre Pio. And then my director says, you need to fall in love with Christ. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? You know, uh, how? And he says, you need to go to a Franciscan friary. So I go online. I look for the nearest Franciscan friary to my house and I wind up in Santa Inez. Ed entra così un'altra persona nella tua vita che è fra Alex Rodriguez. So another important person entered your life, brother Alex. Del That's convento right. della missione di Santines That's right. in California. Yes. I met him through a man named Brother Jude, who was the doorman. He was doing vocational ministry when I first showed up. I showed up with my truck and a tent in my truck and I slept in the parking lot for months uh, and he shows up maybe a month in and brother Jude introduces me to him and me and him start talking about catechism. It's to uh, be in contact with people who are inquiring into the order. Eh, Fra Alex, come ricordi questo primo incontro con Shaya uh, presso il convento? Brother Alex, how do you remember your first meeting with Shia in the Friary? It was at Mass. It was a daily Mass uh, during the week when I first met Shia. Brother Jude, who was there before me, uh, had met Shia, uh, who had Shia been coming to Mass frequently. Um, and that was my first encounter with, with meeting Shia. Um, I had heard about him. Um, probably have seen probably one movie or two in the past, um, but I wouldn't have recognized Shia at the time because his hair was pretty long. Um. Quindi, al di là um, del supporto necessario per uh, le riprese del film, um, immagino che sia cominciato questo percorso insieme anche per trovare um, la fede necessaria per andare avanti della vita. So bes besides the support that was necessary uh, for Shia for filming, um, uh, something deeper happened between you. Uh, you start together a uh, path of faith. Yes, uh, so it was myself, Brother Jude, and Brother uh, Marvin, the three of us, we were working with Shia, who was asking us about Padre Pio, about the Catholic Church. Uh, we were helping him understand Uh, who Pio was, but also what our faith is about. Uh, we were making the, the, the faith real for him to understand. But also, they laugh a lot. And I felt the same thing I felt online in the church. My idea of friars was meek, uh, austere, uh, boring, quiet, prayerful people. And that's not what it was. It was not that. It no, was, così. yeah, it wasn't. It was joyful. Sì. And that was the, that, that were, that was where I was hooked, by the joy, and then gospel. E fra Alex, la prima volta che sei qui a San Giovanni Rotondo? Brother Alex, is it your first time in San Giovanni Rotondo? Yes, it's my first time in Italy. Bene, Shaya, come ti sei preparato alle riprese del film? Uh, how did you prepare for the filming? C'è un metodo? Is there a special method you used? Um, Uh, I, I, deep identification with Pio, uh, a lot of time with him, uh, we went to Oakland, there was a canon um, in um, Christ the Child Ministry. Is that the order, Christ the Child? I think it's Christ the King. Christ the King. Yeah. And he, um, he does traditionalist mass, old rite. 
So a lot of time uh, learning Latin, learning the old rite, uh, a lot of time with him in catechism. You can't play Pio unless you love Christ. So falling in love with Christ and trying to become Catholic, going to uh, adult education classes, being in the, the church all the time, going to the novitiate, going to uh, um, barbecues, going to confirmations, uh, being in the church all the time for six months or something. And in many ways, um, ministers are like actors. Not to say that they're fake or to diminish them or minimize them, but when the consecration happens at Mass, through the office of Christ, the minister, as an actor, is recreating the ascent to cavalry with his voice, with his body, and most, most of all with his heart. And so I identify deeply with that, the idea that the more a person lives in accordance with the Redeemer, with the supreme uh, priest, the more their life exudes Christ. So he made me do this thing called the 90-day exodus, where for 90 days I try to live the, the oath of the cord. A secular man is very hard. Quindi tu hai vissuto un po' di tempo sia nel convento di Santine, se se non sbaglio, in California, ma poi eh, hai avuto modo anche di visitare i luoghi di San Pio prima delle riprese. C'è un'emozione forte che ricordi nel momento in cui sei entrato in contatto con, con i luoghi veri di San Pio? So you lived for a period in the friary of uh, uh, Sant Santines, but after that uh, you, you had the chance to come to uh, see some of the friaries. So what was um, a strong emotion you felt when you visited Padre Pio's places? Oh, yeah, I mean, I still feel it every time we go in there because uh, I do think the Pio saved my life <clears throat> in a lot of ways and not trying to milk it for the TV or nothing like that, but I don't want to act no more. I'm not interested in making movies, really. I think my God is very intelligent. My God used my weaknesses to bring me closer to Him. He presented this movie, and um, a weaker me chased the movie because in the movie was fame and money and success and all the other stuff I was running from, and He... he, he yeah, seduced me. Quindi. I've been seduced into God through this movie, through Pio and the story of Pio, because Pio makes God accessible. Jesus felt too far for me to grab. Pio felt like somebody I would have known in my life. He feels accessible. He makes faith real for millions, me included. When you walk in and you see him laying in state, or you see the gloves, or even more than that, you see the hospital, it's hard to deny the miraculous. This is a poor man who had nothing and he built the biggest hospital, one of the biggest hospitals in Italy. Forget how you feel about the supernatural. That hospital is a miracle and you can't deny it. Um, what's happened in San Giovanni Rotondo since he was here is miraculous. He's built an entire economy. For, we're in a Padre Pio film studio. <laughs> That's, that feels miraculous from a man who comes from abject poverty. Uh, I know capitalism isn't everything, but you can't have a life unless you can support your family. And just the sheer miracle of the fact that this man made, um, made a, a lifestyle possible here for, for hundreds of thousands of people feels miraculous. Irregardless of how a person, a secular person, who's in the midst of a relationship with Christ feels about it, there are certain miracles in Pio that you can't deny which is why he's important to me. The things that kept me from the faith would be things that my logic couldn't reason around. Jonah in the whale. Think stories like that that are, that are a different genre of the Bible I would use to pick apart the whole Bible. You can't do that with Pio. Use things like Jonah in the whale, pick apart the whole Bible. I would discount the beauty of the forest because of the ugliness of some of his trees. And then pain makes you willing to stop arguing because joy feels good, and Pio makes the supernatural feel rational. And so through Pio, I'm able to look at the Gospels from a different, a different perspective, less as an antagonist um, who's trying to pick the thing apart, and more of a believer. Um, and now that I have felt, faith comes when you know. Faith and belief are different words. 
Belief is when you're willing to know. Faith is when you really know. Um, I have no right to la laugh and smile and joke like I do. My life on paper doesn't make sense that I laugh like I do. Um, that's only because of God. Um, when, I, when I go to church, I feel um, lighter. I feel like Pio talked about like um, he would, before Mass, he would feel a fever. He'd feel hot and he'd feel feverish. And then after receiving Mass, he'd feel uh, a calm, a peace. I feel that same kind of thing, definitely not to the same degree. But before I go into Mass, I feel like this tension. It's because I respect you very much and all the men who are in San Giovanni Rotundo. I respect very much. So I feel kind of tight. When I'm sitting next to him and I know he's given his life to this, I feel tight. I feel scared. And then as Mass goes on and I start to find that I'm a part of it, I, my tension releases and I feel like lighter. At the end of Mass, I always feel lighter. I have never gone to Mass uh, and felt worse. Um, and so that I don't, that for me is faith. It's when I know that going to Mass makes me feel better. It calms me at night. My prayers calm me. The rosary changed my life. I could never meditate. My mother was big into hippie stuff um, and would talk a lot about meditation. The program I'm in, this, um, uh, this anonymous program that I'm in talks a lot about meditation. I could never meditate until I started doing the rosary. The rosary led to, this is going to sound crazy, but when I do the rosary, I feel like a tickle in my forehead. And then I focus on that tickle and the words of the rosary and the mantra of it all. And my whole world pauses. Everything gets slow. And this is a lot to translate, so I'm going to shut up. Sì, ma di tutti gli aspetti della spiritualità di Padre Pio che hai dovuto apprendere e poi chiaramente interpretare nel film, ce n'è proprio uno in particolare che ti rimane dentro e che pensi che ti accompagnerà sempre nella vita della sua spiritualità? Uh, which aspect of Padre Pio's spirituality um, is, is, is part of you, something that you will take back with you? That he, he would always say that he was the biggest sinner. He always talked about the fact that he was a sinner and found redemption in Christ. Um, and, and his obedience. You know, the Vatican exiled this man and said he was a, a liar and a deceitful person and a cheater and a this and a that and he was crazy and the whole world thought he was crazy and he had the restraint and the foundation to go sit in that, in that church by himself and practice mass by himself when the Vatican said no more. Um, in that way, he's an example for a person like me, not to fight, but just to surrender and let God let God do, do it. Let God take control of your life and things will work out. Vedo che ti commuovi quando parli di questo. You can see your, your, your touch when you talk about this. Yes, I, 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 I do really believe that this saved my life. Ritieni che sia attuale oggi il messaggio di Padre Pio? Do you think Padre Pio's message is, uh, is actual nowadays? It de it, I, I think that... Um, It depends on a person's willingness, you know. Um, pain is not a fad. I, I ha I have, the people that I've met who've had big conversion experiences in the church come from deep pain or very real experiences with evil. I, I don't know another way in. Um, so I don't even think it's a, it's, what Pio does is he bridges the gap for me. He makes it easier to have faith. Pio's message is Christ. Yeah, but he makes it more accessible. He makes it... Shaya, tu hai una famiglia, no? Sei legato ad una donna e hai un figlio. Qual è la prima cosa che gli racconterai quando ritornerai in America? Shaya, you have a partner, you have a child. What is the first thing you will tell them when you get back? Well, I have a lot, I, bought a, I got a lot of rocks from... Uh, uh, The, the sanctuary of, uh, Saint, of uh, Archangel Michael, and I have a whole bunch of these little stones, and I'm going to put them in my daughter's room. Um, my wife uh, is open to, um, to being baptized. My child will be baptized. I'd like to come here and have my child baptized here. Um, I have relationships with 
with religious men now that I didn't have before. Questo ci fa piacere. The fries are very happy if you have yeah, your, yeah, your same, daughter baptized here. Same, yeah. same. Adesso come si descriverebbe l'uomo Shaya Labov? How would you describe yourself now, uh, the, the new Shaya Labov? Um, hmm. Um, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very loved by God. I know that. And I, I, I want to love God better. And so I'm trying to live a more righteous life. There's things I need to change. Um, and I'm, I'm working on it. Hai detto che no, il messaggio di Padre Pio è Gesù Cristo, è il Vangelo. Chi è Gesù Cristo per Shaya? He said, uh, you said the message of Padre Pio is Jesus Christ, is the gospel. Who is Jesus Christ for you? Lord, uh, the Redeemer, Savior, my... Like a best friend. Ti rende felice amico? questo percorso di conversione? Does this conversion make you happy? Yeah, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. See. Happy, I don't know if happy is the word. Um, you know, when you look at Christ on the cross, you know, uh, you wouldn't describe that man as happy, but, but, but joyful in his suffering, joyful in his suffering, because he had purpose. And I feel like now my life has purpose. Sai, Shaya, le tue lacrime sono belle. Shaya, your tears are beautiful. Oh, man, stop it, man. <laughs> non, sono, non sono segno di debolezza. They are not a sign of a... No, no, no. Ma no, segno no, di una no, forza no. che, appunto, esce anche da questa emanazione di luce dai tuoi occhi. They are a sign of a great strength that comes from your... from the shine in your eyes. Yeah, yeah. I used to be a big manipulator, so I feel weird about this. I get scared that I'm, that I'm you know, I, I used to manipulate a lot, you know, and I used to lie a lot, and I don't want to do that, and so I get scared sometimes to be emotional. I watch Alex. Mm -hmm. I watch him get flooded with emotion. This is a man who's devoted his whole life to this, and he has a hard time crying, you know, because he doesn't want to be a distraction. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I would say... Um, mm, If you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're running with God, you're playing with loaded dice. God cheats in your favor. And you may not have everything you want right now, but you have everything you need right now. Shaya, chi vuoi dire grazie in questo momento? Shaya, who do you wish to thank now? Oh, phew, it's a long list. How much to, okay. <laughs> um, all the clergy that helped me along the way, my sponsor, um, everybody from Santa Inez, everybody from San Marco, Abel Ferrara, my mother, my wife, um, the therapist at the rehab that I went to, all my brothers in, in this program that I'm in, um, all the friars that helped me along the way to get here, uh, sister, sister Lucia, who's been doing adult uh, training with me, who's, who's had a lot of patience with me, uh, Father Bobby, Father Bob, uh, Peter, Father Peter, um, all the boys at, in Oakland, Um, all the Franciscan friars who've helped me, uh, all the Capuchins who've helped me, um, uh, the Benedictine monks who housed us in Pulsano, um, uh, Father Kenneth, uh, the exorcist from Oakland who, who walked me into this whole thing and, and uh, explained Satan to me in a real way and made it very real for me, um, the Catholic Church, um, uh, you for allowing me to come here and give you my testimony. Um, uh, mm, Father Pasquale for inv introducing me to everybody here at San Giovanni Rotundo and taking us by the hand and giving us a place to stay. Um, the whole crew on the movie, the writer of the movie, uh, Maurizio, you, I love you, dude. And um, um, Brother Jude, yeah, Brother Jude and um, Mm. Nico for letting me come to his confirmation and um, the parking attendants to Santa Inez for not kicking me out. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, I could keep going, but, but that's pretty good for now. I'm sure I missed a bunch of people, but they know I love them and I pray for them every night. Ne sono davvero tanti. 
Allora vuoi dire grazie a tutti coloro che in questo momento stanno rendendo bella la tua vita? So there are, there are many, many people, many, so many. you want to thank all the people that are uh, making your life joyful at the moment. Yes. E noi diciamo grazie a te per averci aperto il tuo cuore. And we thank you for opening your heart to us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for letting me in. Grazie a Fra Alex. We also thank uh, uh, Brother Alex. Grazie a te Giulia per la traduzione. Thank you. Grazie ai nostri amici tecnici in regia Antonio Lalla e Roberto Viscio e grazie a voi per averci seguito. Pace e bene.